so we're now we're now recording uh good morning good afternoon and good evening to everyone and um welcome to this consultation meeting as we prepare for the oeru international partners meeting uh i see we've got a, a, a quite, a, quite a good number of folk uh that have joined us just one or two housekeeping rules if you could just please mute your audio if you're not speaking um, so that we can avoid any uh, feedback loops. Uh, towards the bottom of your panel, there should be a little microphone icon that you can toggle on and off. So I'd appreciate that if you could just mute if you're not speaking. And then, of course, remember to turn it back on if you want to say something. <laughs> um, if this is your first sort of open consultation meeting that you are joining, our uh, sort of standard practice is when we are discussing decisions, that silence means assent. Uh, so yeah, I mean, anyone is free to contribute to the conversation, but you know, if we're taking a decision, if we don't hear anything, we assume that everybody uh, is in agreement with us. Um, and that is pretty much how we, we run these sessions. Now I've scheduled an hour for the meeting and I'm keen that we get finished within that hour. Uh, and with your permission, I think it would be a good idea if we just skip the introductions, if that's okay with you. Uh, because if everybody has a minute or two introducing themselves, we'll be 20 minutes into the meeting. So with your permission, um, we'll skip the introductions of everyone. But when, when you do speak or contribute to the meeting, you can introduce yourself then. Um, does that meet everybody's agreement or would you like to go through a quick round of introductions? I'll take silence to mean assent that we won't. We'll skip over introductions. Okay. Great, thank you very much. So let's see technology willing. Uh, let me see if I can get a screen share going here. Uh, that should be coming through for you now. Just want to run. Okay. Uh, is the screen share coming through? Dave, can you just give me a thumbs up if the screen shares? Thanks, yeah, that's all good. So there we go. So this is the agenda I, I posted. It's been available in the wiki. Um, I mean, the aims I'd, I'd be keen for us just to cover today, just review our progress with the OERU first year of study and the uh, uh, MVP, Minimum Viable Product uh, Technology Platform. Then to move, uh, move on to the consultation of the agenda for the sixth international partners meeting. We have a tradition at the OERU that we consult with our partners in shaping up the agenda. Once we've had this discussion today, I'll also be meeting with the Africa and the European partners uh, who in a different time zone next week uh, to have this conversation with them as well. Um, and then we'll start crafting the agenda in the wiki uh, based on the conversations we've had now. And then, you know, it's all done openly and transparently, so you'll be able to contribute it at any time. And then also just to update on a couple of related projects in the marketing and uh, analytics space. I also uh, posted uh, a rough outline agenda uh, on the wiki page there. Uh, I assume that we're all comfortable with the agenda. I didn't have anybody post any additional items on the agenda. So before we move on, um, is the agenda okay with you? Again, silence means assent. Anything you would like to add? Just on another note of housekeeping, if you do, if you would like to get the microphone uh, at the bottom on the the panel that you're looking at, there's, there's a participant link, I believe, and you can ac actually raise your hand, and then I should be able to see on my end uh, if any folk have raised their hands to want to speak. Okay. Right, so what I did is I, I put together a couple of slides just to summarize the progress of where we are at with the first year of study, and I thought that would be a good, a good place to start uh, and provide context for the meeting. So let's just quickly do that. Put that on full screen mode, so that should be coming through. Um, obviously, our major focus this year has been the implementation of the OERU first year of study, and we are targeting two exit qualifications. Uh, the first one is the Certificate of Higher Education in Business, which will be conferred by the University of the Highlands and Islands in Scotland. 
And we're at the point that uh, the appropriate academic board at the University of Highlands and Islands has validated the qualification subject to implementing a couple of uh, requirements. And Andy Brown is in the process of implementing those as final requirements. And so what validation means in the University of Highlands and Islands context, once the qualification is validated, they are able to list it on their university calendar. And even though all the courses might not be completed, uh, we can actually start teaching the program. So in terms of uh, how the qualification is structured, it's 120 UK-based credits. Uh, there are three core courses that total 60 credits, which the University of Highlands and Islands will be assembling as OER. And then the remaining 60 credits uh, will be made up from the list of optional courses we've got there. Uh, we have a total of 94 credits or, or optional credits that will be available. So we have more than uh, sufficient courseware for the Certificate of Higher Education in Business. The green ticks you see there are courses that are, are completed and published on the OERU platform. The progress bar courses there are more than 75% complete and should be completed by the time we get to the International Partners Meeting in October. Uh, also of interest is uh, we've signed an agreement with the Sailor Foundation who have given us a license to use the item test banks for summative assessment for the principles of microeconomics and principles of macroeconomics courses. So that would mean any of our partner institutions would be able to use automated assessment uh, for these courses should they want to. We have a license to use those test banks and we are keen to uh, you know, imp uh, implement a, an arrangement with ProctorU for the identity validation for those two courses. So that's kind of where we're at on the Certificate of Higher Education in Business. Uh, the second uh, exit qualification is the Certificate of General Studies that will be conferred by Thompson Rivers University. Uh, the Certificate of General Studies at TRU has a residency requirement of six North American credits. And basically, TRU have in fact completed the two courses that would be required for the residency requirement. Uh, Art Appreciation and Techniques has been completed. Introduction to Research Methods in Psychology has in fact been completed on the wiki. The only work that is uh, being done there now is just to uh, reconfigure it or reconfigure that course uh, in, into micro courses. And so TRU are progressing that work. Uh, we will have uh, in the arts field 26 credits available. You can see the courses that have been uh, already completed there and available for offer. Uh, introductory to psychology, uh, Rajiv, I know you are pretty much close to done there. Um, also, it uh, you know, being a certificate in general studies, it's also uh, possible to have the business courses recognized uh, towards the certificate of general studies at TRU. Um, there's an internal approval process uh, for all these courses, and uh, Brenda Thompson, uh, the associate dean of arts, there is leading you know the uh, internal approval processes at TRU. So that's all looking good. We've got sufficient courseware to get moving there. Um, as you well know, those of you who have been traveling with the OERU for a long time, um, I mean, the, the key features of our credit transfer model is that our partner institutions retain decision-making autonomy over all aspects of the credit transfer. And as you know, we've designed the credit transfer system in a way that is able to operate within the existing policies of our partner institutions. Uh, we, uh, the partners who are actively engaged with the first year of study, in other words, those that will be, uh, have confirmed that they will be offering assessment services for transcript credit, as well as the two conferring institutions, have uh, collaborated and developed uh, the credit transfer contract, which is the agreement that will be signed between the participating partners. Uh, that, that a document has been reviewed by the respective registrars at these uh, partner institutions. I've also circulated a consultation document that if any of the part, uh, any of the other partners want to get 
on board with the first year of study in either offering assessment services for transcript credit or recognizing any of the OERU courses in the first year of study towards local qualifications. I've circulated that document so that you'll be able to see what it looks like. Um, and of course, any feedback uh, would be welcome. I just want to note that that credit transfer agreement was based on the uh, guidelines for credit transfer and credit accumulation that we approved at the 2015 meeting. So, I mean, this has been uh, arguably the hardest nut to crack within the network, but we, we've actually made very, very good progress uh, with the fact that we have, you know, the registrars uh, comfortable with the uh, articulation agreements. I also just want to update you, the OBRU has um, partnered with a new micro-credentialing initiative called EduBits, which has been led by Otago Polytechnic. And all the optional business courses, um, all the optional micro-courses that we've assembled for the OBRU first year of study will be available for transcript credit. I also just want to mention a recent announcement by the New Zealand Minister of Tertiary Education, Skills and Employment that, is laun or that, that, have, that has launched um, three micro-credentialing pilot studies uh, for New Zealand to uh, investigate. And the EduBits pilot with OERU is one of the official pilots that have been investigated in New Zealand. So, I mean, clearly there is growing interest in how uh, the micro-credentialing model might pan out in the future. So, for example, in the OERU context, this is an example of the Introduction to Project Management course, which is part of the Certificate of Higher Education Business. There are four micro-courses um, that are available. Once the learners complete each one of these micro-courses, they will uh, receive a digital, or they will receive digital certification for assessed learning. And once the learners have completed the associated set of micro-credentials, uh, Otago Polytechnic will be able to issue transcript credit, uh, which will be recognized towards the Certificate of Higher Education Business at, at UHI. So we'll also be able to pilot uh, the whole micro-credentialing space with the OERU first year of study. Um, we are... We have announced a, a, a soft launch schedule uh, commensurate with the decision that was taken at the 2016 partners meeting, uh, you know, to focus on realistic but, you know, and conservative targets as we slowly build brand awareness and collect data uh, with the, uh, the launch of the OERU first year of study. So the first phase is we'll just start with, the, with one course, which will be learning in a digital age. Uh, which focuses on building the digital and learning literacies that are required for the 21st century, uh, which is one of the courses that will be recognized towards the Certificate of Higher Education in Business. And then we decided to focus on courses which are likely to have uh, a large appeal uh, in, in these early phases so we can gather data. Uh, during phase two, we're looking at launching principles of management, uh, introduction to entrepreneurship, and introduction to project management. And then what we'll do is we'll plot out the, the phase launch for phases three and beyond. And uh, our thinking is that that will be one of the major agenda items at the international partners meeting. So that in terms of where we're at with uh, courseware, uh, the other side of the equation is this uh, concept of open pedagogy, which I accept is not well defined yet and you know it's still very much a contested concept but i do think it's worthwhile to think about what our, the OERU open model enables that closed is not easy or that closed would not be able to do and we have a couple of interesting examples one is this uh, notion of the discovery uh, uh, the pedagogy of discovery which uh, Jim Taylor has been working with. Now I accept that the image that I've got there is only semi free range learning. Uh, you will see that there is a little fence in the background, but I, but I suppose that's uh, you know, in, indicative of the kinds of constraints that we have to work with. So we've got, we've got a number of courses that have uh, implemented this uh, thinking of 
the pedagogy of discovery where learners go out and access and find resources in pursuit of their own learning interests in order to achieve the learning outcomes of the courses. And uh, one of the uh, good examples of this is the course that uh, USQ assembled, Regional Relations in Asia and the Pacific. Um, I mean, the Asia Pacific region is more than 40 different countries and arguably I don't think it would be easy to assemble a closed textbook that covers 40 different countries. So it's, it's, it's a good example of how this open uh, pedagogy of discovery is able to support learning in ways that closed models are, are not able to do. We've also implemented the pedagogy of discovery in the learning in the digital age course. The other dimension is, you know, thinking about what learning on the open web might look like in the future. And, and this is one of the strengths, I think, of the OERU network is that we've taken an, an approach rather than uh, presenting and offering our, our learning environments through a single application. We are thinking about how would you design a system where learners are actually learning on the internet as opposed to, for example, using a single learning management system. And we can you know, have a look at some of our uh, technology that we're using to achieve this. Those of you that have been engaged with the assembly of OERU courses will be familiar with the model we use. We author all our courses using um, wiki technology, in fact, the MediaWiki software engine. Um, this gives us the ability to collaborate uh, internationally across our different countries but also to maintain a detailed version history of all the edits uh, that are made with our, our course developments. So basically what an author does is they assemble a simple outline on the wiki. Uh, for our OERU partners, we provide the ability to request a snapshot, which triggers a script that automatically publishes a responsive website that is uh, hosted on WordPress technology. On the other side of the equation, this is pretty much what the uh, delivery platform looks like from the learner's perspective. Uh, learners access the course materials that are published on the website, these WordPress websites. As OER, uh, no passwords are required in order to access the materials. Uh, for us, uh, any course materials that require a password are per would be per definition uh, closed, right? Um, so learners are able to access all the course materials for all our courses uh, on, on, on the WordPress published sites. And then we use a, a number of distribution technologies, best of breed open source technologies that enable the learners to interact with each other. And we have some smart technologies that are able to syndicate and aggregate all these interactions on the web in the live course feed. And in a moment, Dave will explain a little bit of what's happening underneath the hood uh, in terms of how all those technologies fit together. So technology willing, uh, I've embedded an iframe here, which is an example of uh, the live learning, uh, the, the first uh, micro course of the learning in the digital age, uh, digital literacies for online learning. This is pretty much what uh, a published course site would look like. Uh, we assemble all our courses as individual learning pathways. Um, so I could go, for, ex for example, into one of these learning pathways. So this is the learning pathway on finding and selecting open resources. You'll see that it is assembled as a number of individual course pages. Uh, learners can navigate uh, either through the main menu or just clicking on the next button. So you get the idea in terms of how learners can navigate through the course materials. The other interesting thing is, uh, which I won't click on now, but at uh, every course page that is published uh, has a link back to uh, the source uh, content in the wiki. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's how we are able to, you know, keep the course materials up to date and have, a, you know, have one source of course materials that has uh, version control. Uh, the, just the other thing I just wanted to highlight, just to give you a bit of a sense of how this pedagogy of discovery works with the different technologies. Uh, here is a list of a number of learning challenges that have been assembled for this course where the learners go out 
and uh, do a number of things and produce uh, artifacts of learning. Uh, with a pedagogy of discovery, one of the technologies we use is uh, this, the, the resource bank. Um, so I'm just going to go out of full screen mode here. And let me just click on a resource bank activity within the course material so you can get an idea. So basically what happens, you know, a bit of instructions. This is around learners, you know, developing a definition on digital literacies. You know, they will search for resources and they're given a couple of instructions and then they're invited to share resources that they find on the resource bank. Uh, so let me open that up. So this is a, 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 a technology called Semantic Scuttle. It's a, a piece of open source software which enables the sharing of resource links, uh, not dissimilar to the proprietary uh, Adijo web service where learners can share resources they found useful to their own learning interests. Uh, it has features where I'm not logged in at the moment, uh, uh, but if I were logged in, uh, they would be able to vote for resources they found useful. They can uh, look at just the resources they've shared. They can look at resources that have been shared according to different links and tags. So you can get an idea of how these distributed learners could uh, able or would be able to share uh, resources that they find useful in terms of their own learning. So just going back to the course site again. Uh, let me just go back to... list of challenges here. Uh, another example that we uh, have integrated, uh, some of you will be familiar with this technology uh, called Hypothesis. Uh, it's a open source technology that enables uh, learners to annotate any web page uh, on the internet. Uh, so here's an example of an activity where the learners are invited to go and uh, read this article that uh, Ma Maha Bailey ha had written on digital skills and digital literacies. Um, and so they would then go to Hypothesis. Let's just go to the Hypothesis uh, website. So I'm now logged into Hypothesis. Uh, here's the article uh, that we've invited the learners to go and annotate. And let's just wait for that to load. So there's the, the article. Um, and basically how this works is uh, you'll see here that, you know, learners would be able to annotate uh, any page, right? They could add their comments uh, related to that annotation. And then learners would then also be able to reply to posts that other learners have made. And then by adding the course tag, our technologies will be able to harvest any li uh, links to annotations or replies uh, that learners have posted on the course. So there's just two uh, examples of the different technologies we're using to enable uh, this you know, distributed pedagogy. So at this point, what I'm going to do is hand back to Dave or we'll hand over to Dave to talk us through what's happening underneath the hood. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, I'm Dave Lane. Um, I'm a open source uh, technologist. That's my role with the OER Foundation and I'm based in Christchurch in New Zealand. Um, so I have um, inherited a very amazing piece of software written by some of you may, may be familiar with Jim Titzler, who was uh, the technologist, the main technologist in the OER Foundation prior to, to my taking on that role. Um, and uh, I'm just sort of updating this um, technology, which we refer to as Wiki Educator Notes or We Notes. Um, as you can see, uh, the, the concept is that learners will have any number of places that they can collaborate with one another or materials that they can identify as being of interest to them in a context of a, of a given course. So Wayne has just showed you the semantic scuttle, um, uh, which you can see here is the OERU bookmark. So we've rebranded it for our own use as OERU bookmarks because semantic scuttle is a bit of a mouthful and um, 
uh, but we've got a whole number of other technologies that our um, feed harvesters are able to automatically uh, check with every, uh, well, in some cases they do it in real time, and in some cases, depending on the technology, they'll do it every um, 10 or 15 minutes. So anytime someone publishes something, um, for example, if they do a, a, a hypothesis annotation or if they make a post in our discourse forums or they use our Mastodon um, microblogging engine, which is very similar to Twitter, although it's, it's open source and it's not run by a single corporation, um, or they post a message on the online group's mailing list, or they submit a we note through the actual um, post uh, the, the posting capability of, of the uh, course feeds that each course has. So for example, you see on the right hand side of this page a, um, a screen capture of a course feed. Um, you'll see that each of the course feeds has a post a we note um, right there.
Good. Oh, cheers, mate. Well, um, hope to talk soon. Yeah. And have a good one. And you too. Yep. Good Right, let's I stop the screen share. Stop the recording.